Hallelujah. The title of the message tonight is Empowered to Learn. Mm. Uh, it's really important for us to be learners. Uh, Jesus said, um, truly, um, those that are continually in the word, they're my true disciples, continually in the word. That's John 8, uh, 31. And so we want to uh, distinguish between those disciples who are learning, continually learning, and those that are followers of Jesus. That's that's what the word disciple means in the uh, Bible. There are two different kinds of disciples. Uh, one uh, type of disciple is a learner, is a learner, and the other is a follower. And so we want to look at these two differences. And uh, we may all want to say, well, we're a learner, but you know, there are some conditions uh, for us to be a learner. And we see these in Luke chapter 14. Uh, we have to forsake everything uh, and we have to lay down our life and pick up the cross and pick up the life of Jesus. That's all of those are conditions to be learners. Uh, so let's just think about these two categories of disciples, uh, learners and followers. Followers, let, let's think about followers. Well, they have a fixed mindset, so they're not learning, a fixed mindset. The learners have a growth mindset. They want to grow closer to the Lord and go higher and fulfill their destiny. And we all might want to say, well, we are learners. And uh, that's certainly uh, perhaps our perspective, but we have to remember the conditions uh, that we have to forsake everything lay down our life and pick up the cross. And those are the mm -hmm. ones who are uh, true learners and they're continually in God's word. The, they have a growth mindset. The others have a fixed mindset. So uh, let's think about uh, followers for a moment. They want to be good Christians and they want to do good Christian things like go to uh, church services and uh, why there's a lot of different reasons to go to church services. Uh, it may be to see and be seen. So you want to dress up in your Sunday finest uh, clothing and see who else is dressed up in their <laughs> finest clothing. So that's to see and to, uh, yeah. to be seen. Uh, it may also be to fulfill an obligation. Uh, or it may be, well, I need to go to church service on Sunday morning so I can get pumped up. Uh, and make it through the week. Uh, but now when we think about these meetings that we're having tonight, uh, there's, you're not obligated to come, so that couldn't be a motivation for being here. Uh, and this is not really a place to see and be seen. So this is really about learning. But uh, Paul wrote about some other people that were not learners that would sneak into meetings and uh, because they wanted to spy out their liberty. So sometimes we get people who come in here, want to spy out our liberty. Uh, and if they find something that we say that's not, uh, that doesn't go along with their fixed mindset, well, then they're going to criticize us uh, because we're talking about things that you normally don't talk about on uh, Sunday mornings on church services because we're trying to go to a higher level in the Lord. We've got a growth mindset, and I believe that while everyone here has a growth mindset that you want to grow and go uh, grow closer and closer to the Lord and go higher in the things of the spiritual realm. And, and so these are two important concepts. Uh, and so which are you? Are you a follower or a learner? And, and I want to talk about, you might easily say, well, I'm a learner. But I had this experience one time that I want to tell you about. <clears throat> and that is, uh, we went to uh, a particular congregation where we were learning the word of God and learning about the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit and the spiritual gifts. And uh, one night when uh, we went there, I got uh, upset at my son. Uh, you know, he was just a little boy and he did something he knew better to do. And I got upset at him. And I, I took him outside and, and I, uh, I, I disciplined him, talked to him, and, but I was upset. I went back in and I want to explain this uh, situation to you. 
Okay, so that particular night, the preacher had this wonderful message. He had this wonderful message, and I knew it was wonderful. It was just, uh, I just kept thinking about every point he was making. It was just beautiful. And then when I went out the door, uh, after the service, I thought, I don't remember what he taught. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I didn't learn. See, I was there. I, I was there to be in the service, and I wanted to learn, but I didn't have the right attitude. I got upset. My son did something that he shouldn't get upset about. I had to take him out. This was right before the service uh, began. And so that night, I didn't learn anything. And I knew it. I knew I didn't learn. And that night, I had a dream. And they confirmed that I didn't learn anything because I was going down in the dream. I was going down a wonderful buffet line, had all kinds of wonderful food. And I loaded my tray up with wonderful food. And at the end of the buffet, I walked down, I had my tray just full of food. When I got to the end of the uh, buffet line, I just dumped my food in the garbage. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I didn't get anything out of it. And it's a real confirmation to me that that's exactly what happened that particular night mm -hmm. in the service. And that dream happened immediately after that. And I knew it was a confirmation. So it's not just an overall attitude that you have. It's about the attitude that you have about a particular time, at a particular time and place. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that we need to have an attitude uh, of learning. Mm -hmm. So when we come into these meetings, we need to be prepared to learn. So how can we get prepared? Well, if we pray and, we, and we're seeking the Lord and we want to find out what the Lord has for us, if we all come into these meetings in one mind, in one accord, and in unity, then we will all learn a great deal. If we come in here and we're distracted and we have other things going on in our life, th then we may leave here and we may not get anything out of the meeting. We may want to learn, <clears throat> but it matters a lot about our attitude. <clears throat> It matters a lot about our attitude. And so what I encourage us all to do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm taking a throat lunge. I'm excited about the message tonight. <laughs> yeah, and are. maybe I went too quick and too fast. <laughs> <clears throat> what I encourage all of us is to be ready to learn. Mm -hmm. And that's the motivation for us to be here. Yeah, help us, Lord. To, to learn. If, because let me say, you are important. You are important to this learning process. And so if all of us, each and every one of us comes into these meetings with an attitude to learn, then we will learn and we'll all grow to a higher level. And, <clears throat> but if half of us come in here distracted Jesus and Christ. worried about the things of the day, then, then you're not contributing and you're, you're not sharing and supplying your part. We all need to come in in unity, one accord, then we will learn. We will all learn together. We'll learn and move to a higher level. So there are two types of disciples. And even at one moment, we might be a learner and the next moment we might be just a follower. We want to do good Christian things, be a good Christian and do good Christian things. We have to have an attitude. We mm -hmm. want to be a learner. Okay? So we're going to talk about what empowers us to learn. And the core scripture is in Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And this is very familiar with all of us. But we're going to look at it in more detail normally than we look at it. So let's look. I'll ask Sherry to read these three verses. Very familiar to all of us. In Matthew 11, 28 through 30, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, 
and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Some things I want to point out here. Come unto me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, rest is a gift. Mm -hmm. The Lord gives, Lord gives you it. rest. Hallelujah. And when you have, are at rest, you're able to learn of him. Mm -hmm. uh, take my yoke upon you. So we're, we're connecting with him. We're connecting with him. Then we can learn. Now, the mm -hmm. thing about rest is that it's easy to lose rest. Okay, so rest is a gift. But then he said, we have to find rest. Well, that's interesting. He gives us rest. And then he says, find rest. So why do we have to find rest? Because of distractions. Yeah. We get distracted from the Lord. We get distracted from learning. And uh, we, we lose our rest. So he gives us a gift of rest. Then we get messing around with the affairs of the day and the life and we you know and we stop thinking about him and we lose our rest and so the only way we get back to rest is to uh, glory to god join ourselves to him put our eyes on him yes and see how he is the way this is the way he is he's meek and lowly he's humble yeah, uh, and yeah. and that means he's teachable he when he was on the earth, he was teachable. I believe he's still learning today. Yeah, hallelujah. He, he doesn't have a fixed mindset. He he has a growth mindset. His the increase of his government has no, no end. end. So he has a growth mindset, and, and and he learned when he was young. It said he grew in wisdom. Mm -hmm. He grew in wisdom and the favor of God. So he was. He was growing. He had a growth mindset. He's always had a growth mindset. And so when we focus on him, we know that he's going to give us that rest back. So he gives us rest. And then we get busy with the affairs of the day. And we get out of rest. And where did rest go? We have to find it then. Yes, Isn't that interesting? We have to look for it. And the only way we find it is when we look at him. That's and right. we see his nature we look at mm -hmm. his character we see that he is meek and lowly oh that's the way i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to be humble and meek and teachable and and, and humble myself then i find the rest okay so what is rest well it's quietly and confidently abiding in the presence of the lord Ooh, say it again rest is quietly and confidently abiding in the presence of the Lord. When mm -hmm. we're at rest, th this is an important message. And I hope you, uh, I hope you yes. catch a yeah, hold of yeah, it. That's right. When you're at rest, you will be able to receive from the Lord. You will be able to receive from him and you'll be able to respond to him. Because mm -hmm. see, I, what we have is a relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But with the relationship, you have to connect you have to connect with who you're related to. You, you know, I have a piece of paper that says Sherry is my wife. And I could mm -hmm. carry it around with me all day and I could wave it. I could wave it in front of you and say, I'm married. I, <laughs> Sherry is my but but say at some point in time I've got to get away from the paper and I've got to connect with her. And it's the same with the Lord. Hallelujah. If, if you're connected to the Lord, if you're related to him, you, then you've got to connect with him. Uh, the way you do that is with rest. Ooh, and hallelujah. he gives you this gift of rest, but then we get busy and see busyness is going to war against your rest. A and so you lose your rest and you think, oh, I've got to go find it again. And the only way we find the rest is to look at Jesus, is to look at his character and his nature. And then they'll bring us back into rest and, and we'll find rest uh, glory to God. And, and that's where we are empowered to learn because he said, yeah. come into my rest, be yoked with me, be connected with me and, and learn, of, learn me. of me. So this is where the learning comes in. It, you have to be at rest. And, and that night I was talking about when I was at the, uh, in that congregation uh, and I got upset at my son, I wasn't at rest. And, and even though 
the preacher preached a beautiful message mm -hmm. and I knew he was preaching a beautiful message. It was a wonderful message. But when I walked out the door, I didn't remember anything. Now, when you finish these Zoom meetings, I hope you remember yeah, yeah. what we've said. But you, you won't remember if you're not at rest, if you're not at peace. See, Jesus said in four, uh, John 14, 27, I, my peace I give you. Hallelujah. We've got to have his peace. See, it's the peace of mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it's talking about um, Colossians uh, 3.15, and it says the peace of Christ will rule in your hearts, reign in your hearts, going to take charge of your heart. It, it's, it's like a guard. It's like a military Ooh, guard. Uh, hallelujah. But we have to be thankful, too, because that's the last of the sentence. And mm -hmm. then Philippians 4.7. 4 7 says that uh, the peace, of, the peace passes, of God that passes all of it, it passes your mind, it, it, it goes past your mind because your mind can't get a hold of this peace. It's a supernatural peace, and, and we've got to have that peace. So, that rest and that peace, when we're at rest and at peace, we can learn of the Lord and we can connect with Him and receive from Him, He'll speak to us. That's when we can hear his voice. Mm. When we're wanting to learn something. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. A good example of somebody that learned from the Lord was David. A and he wrote mm. Psalm 23. And the Holy Spirit said, this is a psalm of rest. So I'm going to let Sherry read it to you. But I'm not going to have her read it out of the King James. But out of the Passion. Because this will kind of shake up our thinking. It's a little different, but Psalm 23, of course, is familiar with all of you. Yeah. And so I wanted her to read it out of this translation, the Passion Translation. It says, Yahweh is my, is my best friend <clears throat> and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me. Resting place. In his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Even when your path takes me through the valley of the deepest darkness, Fear will never conquer me, for you already have. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. So why would I fear the future? Only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you hallelujah hallelujah pick up some key words here some key yeah, thoughts yeah is about rest is about peace yeah now it david didn't say i'm not going to have any difficulties that's right i'm not going to have any circumstances no he said even when i go through the valley valley of the shadow, shadow of death, death you're going to be with me and i'm going to find rest oh, hallelujah. even in the valley and when my enemies are all, all around, around me, me I'm going to be feasting with the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and Hallelujah. surely goodness and mercy are going to be everywhere I go. That's right. Because they're going to be following me. Goodness and mercy. And, and it's about your presence. I, I, I'm in your presence now, and I'll be in your presence for eternity. Amen. See, and I love the part about that he <clears throat> restores <throat> and revives our life. You know, we need that every single day. I do. I, I need that. I need for him to restore my body, restore my mind, uh, and revive me and cause me to, to be more on fire uh, for him. See, when we are in the presence of the Lord, we'll learn how to receive from him. 
We'll learn how to respond to him. That's right. And we will be refreshed. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. David, see, wrote Psalm 23, and the Lord said that was a psalm, psalm of, of peace. Of rest, rest. Of rest. Psalm of rest. <clears throat> and in rest, David learned some things. He learned how to kill the lion. Mm -hmm. And he learned how to kill the bear. Amen. And he learned how to kill the, the giant. giant Goliath. <clears throat> See, these are not something you can run up against. And, and maybe you, you win uh, one out of 10 <laughs> times. I mean, if he had gone up a Goliath and he didn't know how to fight him, he would have been destroyed Amen. right there. Amen. He had to learn before he ever fought a giant. He had to learn how, what it meant to conquer a giant. See, you can't you can't do that with just natural experiences. That's right. Because nine times out of ten you might beat them, but if they beat you one time, then your head's gone. Yeah, it's they, they, gone. They just cut off your head. <laughs> so you got to learn how to fight a giant before you ever see the giant. And the, and David had because he mm -hmm. rested in the presence of the Lord. Now, see, in Exodus 33, 14, he says, my presence brings you rest. Ooh, and, and so yeah. don't distinguish rest from his presence. Mm, so mm, you mm. get the rest in his presence. And that's why in his presence, you can, when you rest there, you will receive from him. You will be able to respond to him. You'll be able to connect with him. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn oh, of me. Take my yoke, of, connect with me, connect with me. That's what he's saying. You can only do that when you're in rest. See, if your mind is going around and around and around and you're thinking about the past and the regrets of the past, then you're not going to be at rest. And, and, and if you're worrying about the future and anxious about the future, you're not going to be at rest. So let's just slow things down. Let's be at rest. And he's going to teach us mm -hmm. what we need to know and we will be a learner a, a, a disciplined, disciplined learner, learner. <laughs> where'd you come up with that disciplined learner when we're in rest in his presence <laughs> it's very important for yes. us to be a learner and so we may say well yes i'm a learner but where is your attention where is your focus uh when you go into a meeting or when you when you go to pray, when you go to your quiet time uh, or a worship you, session or a worship ser session to worship the Lord, what are you thinking about? Where is your mind quiet? Are you quietly and confidently abiding in the presence of the Lord? That, then you're at rest. But if you go worship the Lord and you sing some pretty songs, but your mind is about the past and regrets of the past or anxiety or about worry, fear about the future. You're not in rest. And you may sing songs with beautiful words and beautiful melodies, but you're not hearing from him because rest, see, and rest, you have to be ready to respond to him and be quiet and confident there in his presence and you're there to hear from him and respond to him and connect with him there have been many times i've gone to pray and yet my mind gets busy and thinking about things i need to be doing well i could have been doing this but here i am trying to meditate on the word or trying to pray and my mind is going out like a racehorse around 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 we've got to learn and you know what will yeah. Like, can I just give one example okay, here? Okay. And that is, if, <clears throat> if my mind is going in all different directions, then when I start praying in, in my prayer language, when I start praying in tongues, immediately my mind becomes still and quiet. And so that is, that's what, that's a, what I use in in times like that when i need to enter into his rest so that i can learn from him then i just begin to pray in the spirit and and quiet my my mind because it says to be carnally minded is death 
uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay. That's right. right. Hallelujah. Right. In Romans yeah. chapter eight. Amen. So, yeah. Okay, so let's look at God for a moment. In Genesis, evidently he worked six days in creation. On the seventh the day, day, he, he, walked, he, rested. he rested. Seventh day, he rested. And he did two things. Now, I'm in um, Genesis 2, verses 1 through 3, and he did two things. He blessed the rest, and he sanctified it. Mm, okay? Mm, mm. <clears throat> so if you're in God's rest, that's where your blessings are going to you're going to be able to receive your blessings mm -hmm. because he blesses rest Hallelujah. and rest is holy. And so mm -hmm. if you're, <laughs> you, you might say, well, I, I don't know what holiness means. I don't know what it means to be holy. Be in rest mm -hmm. because he sanctifies it and he blesses it. Ooh, and if we get out of rest, if we get out of rest, if we get our mind very busy and very active, and we think I have all this negativity coming against us, worry, anxiety. We have all these negative things coming against us. We're out of rest. Well, how do we get back into holiness? You've got to find rest. Find rest. And how do you get, how do you find rest? Think about Jesus. Yeah, think about his friends. nature. Yoke, you know, be yoked with him. Think about his nature that he is meek and lowly. Glory to God. Then you get back into that holy place. See, rest is a holy place. Now, God rested on the seventh day. Now, th this may be uh, interesting to you. He never got out of rest. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> six days he worked, and then his work's over with the rest of eternity. He's a rest. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's a rest. Yes. Oh, well, if we're going to be like God, what, what do we need to do? We need to get at rest. Well, now Ephesians 2 6, Ephesians 2 6 says that we are seated uh, in heavenly places, places with Him. Seated. Now, see, being seated means that we are at rest. See, if you are seated in heavenly places, you're not working. Glory to God. Woo, glory. So God's at rest. Oh, how I like that. Mm -hmm. Brought you mm -hmm. and seated you beside him in Christ Jesus. So you are in rest. And, and so if you get out of rest, you're not seated anymore. You're not seated in heavenly places. To stay at rest, you're in heavenly places, seated in heavenly places. Oh, hallelujah. Seated in heavenly places, we're at rest. Oh, glory. But if we're if we're not at rest, we're not in our pl right place. Oh, you're See, not he, in position. He has a place mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you right there beside him in Christ Jesus, seated in rest. And, you know, Hebrew says there's still a rest. Mm -hmm. for a the Sabbath, God. a mm -hmm. Sabbath rest for the peace, for the people of God. Amen. Still Amen. exists today. Uh, but now the... In the Old Testament, the descendants of Israel, they weren't able to enter into that rest. Why was that? Because of doubt and unbelief. So what is going to keep us out of rest? Doubt and unbelief. So if we're in doubt and unbelief, we're not in rest. So you have to believe. Mm -hmm. Now to enter, listen, these are two important points I'm going to make. To enter rest, you have to believe. Believe and believe that God is. And that he's, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you have to believe. But you don't stay at rest just by believing. You've got to obey and do what he tells you to do. Amen. That's how you stay at rest. You enter rest by believing. And then you stay at rest by doing, doing what he tells you to do. And remember, it's a gift. Rest is a gift. gift. The Lord gives you rest. And that's a gift. You, you can't work for it. But you can lose it. You can lose your rest when you get your attention off of Jesus and, and, and away from that situation of rest. When you get away, get your attention away. And, and the only way we can find our rest is to put our eyes back on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author, author and, and finisher of, of our faith. faith. Now, Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. tribulation. So there's going to be all kinds of troubles coming your way. 
Don't think that you're unique. Mm -hmm. If you have a trouble, if you have trouble today or trouble tomorrow, don't think that you're mm -hmm. unique because Jesus said you're going to have it. You're going to have trouble in this world, in this life. You're going to have trouble. But be of good cheer. Amen. Because I know the way to overcome. That, that's what he yeah. said. I know how to overcome it. The way to overcome it is to be at rest. Mm -hmm. And the way we get at rest, if we get our eyes away from him, we, we lose our rest. And so we have to put our eyes back on him and find rest. So what I want to say is, yes, there is trouble. You may have trouble. I hope you don't have trouble tomorrow uh, or, or next day. I hope you don't have it. But if it comes, be aware of this, that there will be a rest available to you any day. Every situation that comes your way, every problem that comes your way, there is a rest yes. that you can find. Can I Hallelujah. read this one more time? Okay. Out of the Passion, verse 4 of Psalm 23 says, even when your path takes you through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer you for you already have. This, this is what it's saying. Fear will not conquer me because Jesus has already conquered it. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. I love that. Hallelujah. You have already conquered it for me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So whatever, you know, <coughs> You know, be, because I can live uh, because I know that he's already taken care of every tomorrow. That is what has brought me out of deepest depression. That, that, what's, what that song says, uh, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. That has come up in me over and over and over again because I know that even in the deepest hour that I don't have to fear because he's already conquered that for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to realize is that this is not just a message for tonight, yeah. but this is an action plan for the future. For the future. For every day of your life. Mm, that's good, Freddie. Every day of your life, you need to be at rest. When mm -hmm. the problems come, make sure you're at rest. Yes. And if you haven't already gotten at rest, Find rest because there is rest you can find. Jesus said it. Hallelujah. Look unto me. Hallelujah. Look unto me. See, I'm meek and yeah, lowly. Yes. And you, I'll, I'll show you where the rest is. So every difficulty that comes your way, look for the rest. There can be rest. And when your mind gets busy, just tell it to shut up. Yeah. Amen. That you're going to be that you're a believer. <laughs> And that you are a rest. You, Amen. And you Amen. arrest, arrest, <laughs> arrest uh, that uh, old mind, old carnal mind, all that fear and worry and doubt and unbelief. Stay at rest. Yeah. Reason I say for for the days ahead. Yeah. Uh, even as we're preparing to come together for a meeting on Tuesday night at six thirty, be in prayer about it. Make sure that you have the right attitude that you want to be a learner and that you want to come and contribute to these meetings so we all can learn. We all come. See, your part is important. You have That's something right. to supply. And it may be just your presence here, just releasing your anointing. It may be you have something to share, something you want to tell us, That's right. something you get out of the message that you want to share, a testimony that you have. You have something to supply. And when everybody supplies their part, we're all going to grow in the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to learn of him. He is meek and lowly. We need to remember his nature, his character. And that way we will find rest. Be encouraged. Hallelujah.